20 years ago. The term fe fetal alcohol syndrome, FAS, was first used to describe the cluster of birth defects due to prenatal alcohol exposure, including things like growth restriction, craniofacial abnormalities, and intellectual disabilities, all with lifetime consequences. The term fetal alcohol spectrum disorder, or FASD, has since been adopted as a diagnostic term to actually describe a much broader spectrum of presentations and disabilities resulting from ex exposure to alcohol in utero. The impact of alcohol varies with the amount, timing, frequency of alcohol consumed and depends on a number of, of other factors, including the genetics of the fetus, the genetics of the mother, the overall state of health of the mother, as well as other social, economic, physical, and environmental factors. The disorder can manifest in a wide variety of symptoms, but those with disabilities often face difficulties in areas that include a wide spectrum and wide arena. They include motor skills, physical health, learning issues, memory, attention, impulsivity, communication issues, emotional regulation, and social skills. While every individual is unique and possesses their own strengths and abilities, dealing with these challenges can be very, very much a dilemma for those with the disorder and ones that require varying degrees of supports from family and other supports. It's a complex, multifaceted issue that affects Canadians in all walks of life, in all regions of the country. It is, for context, the leading neurodevelopment disorder in Canada, affecting 4% of the population. That's more than people with autism, cerebral palsy, Down syndrome, and Tourette syndrome combined. However, there are indeed two key distinctions when it comes to the disorder. First, it is much harder to diagnose than most other neurodevelopmental disorders. And secondly, it is preventable. The fundamental goal of this bill is to promote better outcomes in both prevention and diagnosis as well as to improve support for those affected, and to ensure that they can live their lives to the fullest potential without carrying a stigma. Colleagues, the issues that this bill is aimed at addressing is the lack of a comprehensive, coordinated national framework. As we know, through Canada's 10 provinces and three territories, it can feel like we sometimes have 13 separate health care silos, or that we live in 13 fiefdoms. As it currently stands, access to fast prevention, diagnosis, interventions, and supports across our provinces and territories is patchy and unfortunately uncoordinated at best. Making a diagnosis of the disorder requires a multidisciplinary team and involves complex physical and neurodevelopmental assessments. In 2005, the Canadian Medical Journal published an international collaborative ev evidence-based guideline for diagnosis related to prenatal alcohol exposure. Since then, the field has evolved and mushroomed, and additional evidence, expertise, and experience has emerged. An updated recommended guideline was published in 2016 that underscores the importance of pre-pregnancy counseling and prevention. The guideline includes standardized screening, referral, and early intervention measures, as well as the composition of core diagnostic teams. These teams must include a child development psychologist, pediatrician, speech-language pathologist, psychiatrist, occupational therapist, and a physician overseeing the team, depending on the age of the individual assessed. In the current context of our healthcare crisis, you can only imagine how difficult that would be. Colleagues, there are 73 diagnostic clinics across Canada, and those clinics are not evenly distributed. There are provinces that currently don't have a single diagnostic clinic. Even if a province has these clinics, most have lengthy waiting lists or very limited capacity and are almost never located in rural or remote areas. As you can imagine, it can be particularly challenging in these areas to find all the specialists required to properly operate a clinic. And that was indeed much of the challenge in my practice lifetime. 
there is no consistent pan-Canadian tracking system in place. So CANFAS, the National Research Network, relies on smaller provincial studies and extrapolates its data. Less than half of the diagnostic clinics participate in contributing to the national database, typically due to staffing shortages and significant time constraints. As a result, the numbers that we rely on from the database cannot possibly accurately reflect the prevalence or distribution of this disorder across our country. This means that there is a significant but ultimately unknown number of Canadians with FAS that are unidentified and therefore undiagnosed. The problem is particularly acute in those populations which have compromised social determinants of health, including those in the child welfare system, justice and correction, and our Indigenous communities. Colleagues, we are fully aware of the role our esteemed colleagues at the provincial level play across Canada. Some provinces and territories, including Alberta, Manitoba and the Yukon, already have a specific strategy or framework in place to promote FAST prevention, improve measures for diagnosis and to increase supports for those affected. These three strategies share broad foundational goals, such as increasing awareness of the consequences of drinking alcohol while pregnant, promoting prevention of drinking while pregnant, increasing access to assessment and diagnostic clinics, supporting new research to ensure that strategies are informed by evidence-based practices, and providing other supports and services for people with the disorder, their families, and caregivers. Other provinces and territories have other past or present strategies that could help inform the federal government with their own FAST framework. For example, British Columbia had a strategy from 2008 to 2018. Saskatchewan has the Cognitive Disability Strategy, which is meant to provide services to address the unmet needs of people with a more broad cognitive disability and their families. Ontario's 2017 budget included money for the FAST supports, but the strategy was not released. PEI has a mental health and addiction strategy. Nova Scotia has the changing of the culture of alcohol use 2007 strategy, which incorporates FAST into its broader provincial strategies of alcohol awareness and prevention. New Brunswick is building on the experience of other provinces and territories and is currently developing an interdisciplinary provincial strategy. In my own province of Newfoundland and Labrador, we recognize that the support of provincial FAS networks in the Provincial Alcohol Action Plan has gone a, a long ways. The intent is to reduce harms and costs within our province, and the report was released in July 2022. Nunavut is currently working towards a strategic disability plan. Senators, this bill is not designed to reinvent the wheel, but to build on the existing work that has been conducted and can go a long way to informing us on a go-forward basis. Since the early 1980s, a patchwork of awareness campaigns has grown to support women at risk of using alcohol during pregnancy, as well as to meet the needs of peoples and communities affected by the disorder. Informed by research, rhetoric has shifted towards destigmatizing mothers who have used alcohol during pregnancy. Let me say that again because Unfortunately, many women bear this burden and stigma in a lifelong manner. So the rhetoric has shifted towards destigmatization. And an effort is being made to ensure that there are early intervention measures readily available. The earlier the, di the, earlier the diagnosis is made, the early, earlier that interventions take place, the better the outcomes are in the long term. Research, monitoring, and evaluation of individual initiatives has also gradually increased. Given the complex nature of this disorder, it is not strictly a healthcare issue. Rather, it impacts other areas that are very much the responsibility of our federal government, including, in particular, criminal justice and the economy. As a result, successive federal governments have made some efforts to sp support specific projects or programs. For example, in 2003, the Government of Canada released the Fetal Alcohol Spectrum Disorder Framework for Action. The Framework for Action is a tool to guide future action on FAST, 
in Canada and is a result of national consultation efforts that initially took place in 1999 and again in 2002 to 2003. It stands as a vision for how jurisdictions can work together to improve the lives of those impacted by the disorder and critically to prevent alcohol affected births. The framework actually outlines five main goals, increasing awareness of the disorder and the impacts of alcohol use during pregnancy, increasing the capacity for resources and training for response to FAST, creating tools to increase screening, diagnostics, and data collection, expanding knowledge and information gathering, and supporting critical action on the disorder. The framework also specifically outlines the role of federal governments and states that it will continue to focus on developing and strengthening and coordinating functions that ensure access to the necessary tools, expertise, and resources right across the country. In addition to forming the basis for action plans at the federal level, the framework was intended to guide interdepartmental work to address gaps and issues that are not currently undertaken in other sectors, including developing a national guideline. A wealthy country like ours should be able to do that. Expanding scientific and social science knowledge relevant to both prevention and effective support for those affected. Building the evidence base and establishing mechanisms for knowledge exchange between different jurisdictions. And critically, increasing awareness of FAST amongst professionals across the array of sectors that work with people, families, communities, and those affected by the disorder. There is also a companion federal document entitled It Takes a Community that was launched following discussions in 2000 with experts, provinces, territories, and First Nations, as well as Inuit community representatives. The framework is based on the values, principles, objectives, and needs identified by First Nations and Inuit communities across Canada, recognizing the impact of fetal alcohol spectrum disorder and strategizing how it can be best addressed. Honorable colleagues, that was over 20 years ago. The advocates, experts, and those with lived experiences are still calling out on the federal government to take a leadership role in these areas. Improving FAST prevention, diagnostic, and other supports has actually thoroughly been studied in both Houses of Parliament. For example, in September 2006, in the other place, the Standing Committee on Health tabled a report, and I quote, even one is too many, a call for a comprehensive action plan for fetal alcohol spectrum disorder, close quotation. The main thrust of the recommendations put forward can broadly be summarized as a call to the federal government and the health portfolio specifically to develop a comprehensive action plan with clear goals, objectives, and timelines. The committee reported that there was little evidence of any progress beyond the 2003 national framework, despite the repeated efforts to see a comprehensive, comprehensive action plan. The government response agreed that a comprehensive pan-Canadian action plan developed in collaboration with the provinces, territories, and stakeholders is key to addressing the disorder. Within our own chamber, the Standing Committee on Social Affairs, Science and Technology has included recommendations in its report to improve prevention, diagnosis, and treatment supports, including the 2006 report, Out of the Shadows at Last, Transforming Mental Health mental illness, and addiction services in Canada. As our colleagues, Senator Pate and Carter, have pointed out to me, and may hopefully elaborate upon this, a lot of what we know about individuals with FAST comes through their involvement in the criminal justice system. Our colleagues who are members of the Standing Committee on Human Rights will recall the 2019 interim report, and I quote, study on the human rights of federally sentenced persons, the most basic human right is to be treated as a human being. Close quotation. Nancy Lockwood, program manager at the Citizens Advocacy Ottawa, discussed some of the problems that individuals with FAST encounter in penitentiaries. This helps paint a practical picture. I'll put it in her words. Quoting, they are vulnerable to predators. They may experience sensory overload, which makes them prone to outbursts and negative behaviors. They largely do not learn from previous mistakes 
and have dis difficulty understanding the very basic rules of social interaction. People diagnosed with fetal alcohol spectrum disorder also have difficulty with organization and time management, meaning that they often do not arrive on time or at all for probation appointments." Close quotation. She argued for the development of alternatives to incarceration, such as supervised residential settings and work placements, and models that emphasize changing the environment, not the person. This sentiment was echoed again in the 2021 fourth report, Human Rights of Federally Sentenced Prisoners. Honorable colleagues, as the Truth and Reconciliation Commission recognized, the criminal justice system's inability to properly accommodate individuals with this disorder is an issue that disproportionately affects indigenous people, who are being incarcerated at an ever-increasing rate, given longer jail sentences, and subject to harsher punishments in prisons than others in Canada. Under the Truth and Reconciliation Commission's call to action, action number 34 states, and I quote, we call upon the Government of Canada, the provinces and territories to undertake reforms to the criminal justice system to better address the needs of offenders with fetal alcohol spectrum disorder, including, number one, providing increased community resources and powers for courts to ensure that FASD is properly diagnosed and that appropriate community supports are in place for those with the disorder. Number two, enacting statutory exemptions from mandatory minimum sentences of imprisonment for offenders affected by the condition. Number three, providing community, correctional and parole resources to maximize the ability of people with the condition to live in the community and four, adopting appropriate evaluation mechanisms to measure the effectiveness of such programs and ensure community safety. Close quotation. I had the privilege of asking Minister Lametti when he appeared before our chamber during question period a few weeks ago about the screening methods available for FASD for offenders in the criminal justice system. He was unable to give me a clear answer about what options were available. And this is an issue that requires further investigation and we continue to collaborate with his office in this respect. Outside of the criminal justice concept, concept, the Truth and Reconciliation Commission recognized the need for FAST prevention and treatment, specifically in indigenous communities. Specifically, call to action number 33 states, and I quote, we call upon the federal, provincial, and territorial governments to recognize as a high priority the need to address and prevent fetal alcohol spectrum disorder and to develop in collaboration with Aboriginal people FASD prevention programs that can be delivered in a culturally appropriate manner. The federal government has indeed made several investments in programs that help support First Nations and Inuit communities in preventing FASD births and treating those affected. For example, with financial support from the First Nations and Inuit Health Branch, and what is now known as the Indigenous and Northern Affairs Canada, the Poke Tuatut Inuit Women of Canada, the National Representative Organization of Inuit Women in Canada, release the Inuit Five-Year Strategic Plan for FAST 2010 to 2015. The plan set out a vision statement, mandate, priorities, strategic directions, and will guide how the community would co collaborate with governments and other regional and local stakeholders over five years with respect to the problem of fetal alcohol spectrum disorder within Inuit communities across the country. Since 2014-15, the federal government has put in place a fetal alcohol spectrum disorder national strategic projects fund, which allocates 1.5 million annually to contribute to national projects supporting prevention, education, knowledge exchange, and coordination of fetal alcohol spectrum disorder activities for a total of $12 million over eight years. A list of funded projects is available on the program's webpage. The Poktuwatit Inuit Women of Canada have since built on their tremendous efforts by developing a community-based awareness campaign to promote fast prevention across their communities. I had the privilege of asking Minister Miller in our chamber a few weeks ago how recent programs were being evaluated. And again, 
I couldn't get a clear answer. This is another area we, we need to continue to dialogue with the Fed. Despite these government initiatives, studies and report recommendations, many people affected by the disorder do not receive adequate and consistent support and services. The lack of an integrated national strategy, standard diagnostic and screening tools, and comprehensive epidemiological research has meant that progress towards consistent and effective prevention and support has been slow. Honorable colleagues, I believe the time is now. We all know that substantive change is incremental, on the hill glacial at times, rather than transformative. However, delays in action are costing us. In considering inflation, recent reliable research has shown that the societal cost of fetal alcohol spectrum disorder in Canada is significant, topping $10.5 billion annually. This is without accounting for the ongoing global pandemic and any potential changes to these costs because of the pandemic. These costs are divided up into criminal justice costs, health care costs, educational services, social service costs, and other indirect financial losses, including lost productivity. The bill that I'm proposing is very straightforward. The enactment of the bill would require the Minister of Health, in consultation with other ministers and stakeholders, to develop a national framework designed to support Canadians with the disorder, their families, and their caregivers. The framework would include measures to standardize guidelines, improve diagnostic and data reporting tools, expand knowledge bases, facilitate information exchange, and increase public and professional awareness, amongst other things. This would be achieved within a specified time frame with the expressed in intention of working with the provinces and territories and stakeholders, including self-advocates -ad and Indigenous communities and organizations with predominantly Indigenous leadership. In addition to a specific time frame, the framework would be subject to parliamentary oversight. While there are benchmarks, including timelines, Bill S253 by design is not overly prescriptive in what the framework itself should entail. The government must be allowed the flexibility to respect the consultative process of this legislation. This legislation would ensure a coordinated national framework aimed at supporting critically Canadians with the disorder, their families and their caregivers. Colleagues, a national framework to address FASD is long overdue. Given the complexity of this issue and the breadth of its effects, the existing patchwork of provincial and territorial approaches is simply not enough, as we've seen. Since 2020, the Government of Canada has recognized September as Fetal Alcohol Spectrum Disorder Awareness Month. And I'm proud to say that in my own province of Newfoundland Labrador, our Mayor of St. John's, His Worship Danny Breen, has also made this declaration this past September. You've also noticed on your Twitter feeds many communities that are beginning to recognize FAST. We can and should ensure that the federal government continues to take the appropriate stress to address a pressing, multifaceted issue affecting millions of Canadians. Colleagues, we all know this is not a partisan issue. We, as well as our elected colleagues, have heard from individuals affected by the disorder, their families, their caregivers, as well as experts and advocacy groups, that a coordinated national framework would help to improve their lives. This bill would mean one step towards increased equitable access to diagnostic assessment and support services across Canada so that all Canadians with the disorder can achieve their full potential, no matter where they live in this country. It would be one step closer to having a trained workforce that is fast informed across health, social, justice and education systems. It would be one step to support economic and social inclusion and help to reduce the stigma associated with this vulnerable population. Honourable Senators, this bill is one step in the right direction. Thank you. Merci. Miigwech. Senator Martin. Yes, I move the adjournment to the debate. It is moved by the Honourable Senator Martin, seconded by the Honourable Senator Seidman.
That further debate be adjourned until the next sitting of the Senate. Is it your pleasure, honorable senators, to adopt the motion? Carried. Carried. Commons Public Bill, second reading.